Hello YouTube, and welcome to the Fake Mook Character Study Part 21. My brothers, our prayers have been answered, and a literal avalanche of men has been bestowed upon us. And today I, your humble servitor, is there to tell you the story, because as we've discussed in the past, the men were pretty dry, and nothing much was going on. We had to talk about the past a ton. But the good thing with locals is that one day or another, they always re-enter a cycle of production. And when they do, the milk is plentiful. And that's exactly what's happening right now. The situation surrounding our boy Hemingway is insane. And I have so much to tell you about that it actually blew my mind because we might have entered an other golden age of men's. So without further ado, we're going to get into it. Because if you have watched part 20, you know that Bloho, for some fucked up reason, decided to accuse me of publishing uh, pornography on my channel, but not any type of pornography. He actually accused me of posting child pornography, which is the worst offense that a man can do. And therefore, I had to do what I had to do, and I explored his past, and lo and behold, I found out that this old fuck was actually into dealing little kids himself. And this is when Karma chose to strike, because Jason pretty much got entangled in so many things at once that it's almost impressive to see how effective he is at sabotaging his own life. So, from what I gathered and from what I know happened, today I'm going to give you a pretty much chronological recounting of the entire events, something that I've never redone in the past. Meaning that, for once, we are going to feast on fresh mints. So the first consequence of the episode I made is that I know for a fact that now his entire family and circle of friends pretty much distantiated themselves with him. It's something that he shared very stupidly on his Facebook, that he was going through family drama, that's exactly that. A ton of people were reaching out to him, telling him that they couldn't believe he would do such things, etc., etc. So whatever friends he had left are pretty much gone. And the fucked up things that I found in that entire affair is that the one aspect of the disowning that really broke Bloho's heart is the fact that now he knows 100% he's not going to get his dad's inheritance, which first and foremost should be obvious. I mean, his dad hates his fucking guts, but it's also disgusting to see that the only reason he cares about his dad at all is for the perspective to one day get money. That truly speaks to the level of despicability this guy is able of. And it doesn't stop there. You'll see that this family thing where he apparently cares about people just to be able to actually punction money from them is going to be a recurring theme since after this entire debacle happened, Bro decided to sort of redirect his attention towards other endeavors. And so the thing that he decided would be the grand revolution that would save his life is to start doing live streams. He actually started before I released my episode but he really tried to actually be consistent with the entire program. And that, of course, went pretty much as well as you could expect from a long cow. Meaning that the second he started to record his stupid face and to offer an, uh, an actual way for people to access him directly, live, he immediately got trolled to hell and back. His stream is 90% people who hate his fucking guts and 10% people who don't really know what the fuck is going on. But the reason why he had to do that is because his only way to get views and to stay relevant is to constantly try to do something new. It's something I, he did with the breakfast chat. And the issue is that that got old very quickly because no one wants to sit for hours listening to an old fat guy ramble in his underwear by eating food that is half chewed. That is disgusting. Even for the trolls, it proved to be too much. So he moved on to the live streams. And I think he decided to do that because there is a lot of money to be made in this, because you can request donations to answer questions. It's the favorite choice for internet grifters. They all fucking do it on this platform. All of the people who have nothing to say have live streams where they just do nothing of value and they're just collecting money from people who are mentally ill. Of course, it didn't really net him anything because no one wants to donate to him because his opinion is absolutely fucking worthless. But the live streams did offer something very beneficial to us. And that is a platform for him to just speak his mind. Because we now have tens, dozens of hours of archives of Blow just rambling. And whenever he talks for too long, of course, he starts to lie. Because he starts to compensate for his shit life. 
So if one day I am courageous enough, I'm going to peruse the entire catalog and I'm just going to make a special episode where I just make fun of him for all of the shit he said. A ton of dudes are really, really menty. But the one thing that really caught my attention with the live streams in particular was first and foremost, what happened when he started to get trolled on a massive level. Because of course, as we all know it, our boy Hemingway is, is an alpha male, he's a child. And when a child gets trolled, he doesn't care, of course. And he tried really, really hard to stick to that image, maybe because he thought that the trolls were going to get tired. But blow, -ho, the trolls have been doing it for fucking years. We're not going to get tired of it. And on top of that, we know we can always get a reaction from your sorry ass because you have no mental fortitude. So of course, what needed to happen happened. He broke down on stream. Several times he's on the verge of tears. Sometimes he just stares at the camera autistically like a fish out of the water like this. I don't know why he's doing it, maybe to compose himself, but bro, we can still see you. You're still on stream. He's fucking unbearable to watch also. He always is fidgety like he's on meth. He is truly a sad individual to witness. And one aspect of the stream that also got my attention is the fact that he got so pissed off at the fact that no one would watch them because he barely gets any views that this dumb fuck actually went out and purchased more fake subs. Which, at this point, by the way, proves that he's always done that. Meaning that the vast majority of his subs are fake. And we knew that from the past because at some point around 60k subs, he hid his subscriber count. And when it went back up again, it was at 100k. That's absolutely fucking impossible. And now, very recently, a month ago, during the night, he gained a thousand subs. Like, at the second T of a given day, a thousand people in the world said, you know what? I'm going to subscribe myself to this fucked up channel that no one watches and is never recommended. Because of course, that seems to be quite possible and it's not at all by, caused by the fact that this fat fuck decided to purchase the subs. And there is irony in this because fake subs aren't cheap. You still have to pay for them. And we are talking about a guy who is in a dire situation. We're going to get back into it, but it's not just he has no teeth, no house, no wife, no family, no nothing. It's also that he's about to lose it all. And instead of, you know, like a normal person using the money he has to save his problems and to actually solve some issues. No, instead he tries to salvage his own ego by buying fake subs. Bro, you can buy up to like a million subs. It's still not going to change your life. And also, and this is the part that blows my fucking mind. YouTube is your one thing. You should know all of the nooks and crannies of this platform and how it fucking works. Buying subscribers kills channels. Because now YouTube thinks that you have all of these people subscribed, but no one clicks on your videos. It's the reason why your channel died. I mean, your channel died because you're a piece of shit, unintelligent, and the least charismatic human I've ever seen in my life. So of course, no one wants to watch you for a long time. But beyond that, the fact that you inflated your sub count with fake subscribers that cannot physically click on videos also means that the algorithm is going to look at it and say, okay, clearly no one wants to watch the guy. I'm not going to recommend him. That's fucking obvious for anyone with a brain. So in truth, this idiot killed his own channel and he continues doing that. Nowadays, he has, again, 110k subs. He nets around 1,000 views per video. This video is, gain, is going to get more views in a day than he gets in a week. This is insane. And this is all due to his own fucking mistakes. He did that to himself. But instead of learning, what does he do? He buys another 1,000 subs. Truly a fucking idiot. And you can truly see that we are at the end point because he looks awful. At this point, his spell, his teeth are pretty much all gone. He looks like a cancer patient, but he, has, he doesn't have cancer. It's just that the way he's treated his body is so despicable that in his 50s, he looks like a corpse. And the more he gets trolled, the more his health is going to degrade because I think it gets to him to such a deep level that it actually damages his health. I think we are doing direct damage to the heart of Blow. And therefore, I say, let us keep going. But the one thing I found interesting is that apparently he finally has decided to get a therapist. And of course, knowing the guy that very much could be a lie. But if it's not a lie, I truly pity the, per the poor person that has Blow as a client. Because can you fucking imagine having to sit there listening to this guy ramble and having to sift between the lies and the reality? It must be a fucking nightmare. But the issue is that what he got from his therapy sessions is that apparently it's all the troll's fault. 
So his therapist that he pays, or rather the taxpayer pays because he pays nothing out of pocket, sat down with this guy for hours and decided, okay, my conclusion is that this person is perfectly sane. The issue is the trolls. He went out to say that the trolls were projecting their mental issues on him. Blow, it's very nice that you're repeating what I say, but the difference between you and I is that I have a functioning brain and more than 60 IQ. When I talk about psychology, I know what I'm talking about. When you repeat me like a parrot, you sound like a fucking retard, which is what you are. Projection doesn't work like this. The trolls have nothing to project on you because they're not fucking real. You project on others all the fucking time. Like when you say that I have a receding airline. Again, this is hair. What you have on your head is bored. This is projection. You are bored and stupid. You see other people that you don't like and you call them bored and stupid. This is what you need to work on. Not to fabricate scenarios in your head when it's other people's fault. Jesus Christ. I really hope he doesn't have a therapist because if he pays someone to actually further push him into his delusion, we're going to get a version of blue we've never seen before. Not that I complain because it's going to give us more milk and more mints, but it's something to point out. And the one last thing that I want to mention, and then we're going to move on to the really menti mealy stuff, is the fact that he looks so atrocious on stream that he started to use a Snapchat filter. And you know those photos that girls use to look pretty and it gives them like bright shiny eyes and like big lashes? He started to use that. So he looks absolutely fucking ridiculous. I think he thinks it makes him look handsome, but it doesn't blow up. It's immediately evident. I mean, next time just put makeup on. By this point, you already shoved dildos up your ass. Just ditch the Snapchat filter and just put on makeup. And then put on a dress and assume the fact that you're not a man and you would be happier living your life as a woman. Stop shitting yourself on a daily basis and actually face the fucking truth. But I would actually encourage you to go watch his live streams whenever he does have a live stream just to witness the absolute state of his existence because it's fucking funny. And I know for a fact that he's going to remove the Snapchat filter now, whatever filter he uses to look prettier because he's going to have heard that I know that he uses it and therefore he's going to move on. Now, let's start talking about the actual funny stuff. This is primal shit. And it's tough that, again, if you had told me a month ago he would go back into his own habits of just burning his own life to the ground, I would have told you, well, there's nothing to burn. But with him, he always manages. He always summons something that we didn't know existed, and he just sets it on fire. So this is what happened. This is this is first stage of the entire shit show. One, he started to brag about having a girlfriend which is something he's always done, because if you listen to the guy, he has a, an, a harem of cheerleaders that he fucks on a daily basis, which of course no one's believed. But now there started to be truth, because a certain woman started to actually come out and be in his comments on his Instagram and Facebook and make herself known. And eventually it seemed to be that he wasn't actually lying. He actually got a girlfriend. Now, let's talk about the girlfriend, because I don't want you guys to get a false idea. We're not talking about a smoke show here. This is not a 23-year-old nurse with like perky tits and a nice ass, okay? This is a literal dog. You know, I make jokes about the fact that Bloho actually fucks animals on the down low. I'm starting to believe that it's no jokes. I think he truly is into bestiality because one look at this woman and you would question whether or not this is the missing link, right? Have we, have we found the creature that connects monkeys and humans? I looked at her and I thought to myself, man... I'm not certain whether or not this person would pass a DNA test and be, and be recognizable as a human. You know these like 24 and me, 21 and me, whatever the fuck it's named, or you can tell your ancestry? I think that if she did that test, she would be like 75% rodent. And I say rodent because she lives in Australia. So the doubt is permissible. Because if you look at her, you would think that this thing is a marsupial. It's not a human. She has a scrunched up face. She has these weird noses that chicks get when they do too much anavar and drugs to look like men. It is bizarre, but also not surprising because this is Blow who we're talking about. Of course, he was going to land an absolute toot. And on top of that, what made me laugh is her name. Her name is fucking Ruby Cherry. So first off, it sounds like a strip teaser's name. And secondly, it also sounds like a name that I would use for a sock account to catfish Blow. Ruby Cherry. It's actually much more ridiculous and unbelievable than most of what I've done. I mean, at, at the end of the day, this truly does sound like someone who made a fake of a woman. 
And yet he fell for it, which also shows that Bloho never fucking learns. I humiliate him by catfishing him several times in a row, me and other guys, and he doesn't learn his lesson. But it's not surprising because this time he could tell it was a real woman because he's been in contact with her for a while. This entire affair and romance has been brewing for a while. So it's actually something beautiful, right? Two souls coming together to finally find love. Well, I wouldn't be so quick to actually pull the trigger on this one because it of course went to shit super quickly. But before we move on, I just want to continuously shit on that uh, ruby cherry person. I'm sure she's a, she's a decent individual, at least when she's not connected to Bloho, but the second she entered the entire peace pool of the, the entire Blohoverse that we and you and I live on on a daily basis, this is when she made the biggest fucking mistake of her life. She should have checked what the fuck was going on. Instead, she just jumped in. And I think it's because she's Australian. I'm not saying Australians are dumb, but she carries that gene where you can tell she's like half kangaroo. So something is going on there. She's typically the type of person that I believe would fall for scams that are very obvious to the average human. And she's also kangaroo-like in her ability to communicate with humans. She made a few videos where she tried to explain why she, for some reason, tried to actually shag with blow of all people, and she didn't really manage to communicate well, and her own thought process was very alike Bloho's, because she also seems to be deeply delusional. Then I heard that she had a kid, and it made me sad, because that poor kid is having to deal with a shit hand in life. Now, Bloho, of course, upon scoring that thing, whatever you want to call it, started to be very cocky, because he finally had a girlfriend, he was going to prove everyone that he was an alpha chad. He also insisted it was a female girlfriend, which is a good idea because Ruby Cherry clearly had done her share of stories in the past. And therefore, I do believe that it wouldn't be too much of a far-fetched statement to state that her clit is most likely bigger than, bigger than Bloho's dick. Because she has that frame where she looks like a rejected Oompa Loompa. You know, she looks like she used to work at the chocolate factory and at some point there were, people were being laid off. And she was the one to go because she was too stupid to actually get the job done properly. So she decided that the second best option in life would be to start doing roids and coach people in powerlifting or whatever the fuck she does. And now she looks like a square. You know the guy, uh, the American actor Danny DeVato, or whatever the name is? He looks like a penguin. He's small with a bald head. You know the way his body is shaped? He, he's shaped like an egg, like, like, a, like a weird fridge. There's no curves. She's shaped exactly like this. Meaning that I think that if she went to Costco, Kof, favorite place to shop, and she hid in between two fridges and she got painted white, she could stay there forever. They would close the shop on her. No one would actually notice it's an actual human being. That's how despicable she looks. And therefore, of course, Bloho had to insist that she was a female, because if you didn't tell me again, I would assume this is a marsupial. This is someone that belongs in a zoo. And the issue with uh, having a girlfriend that you then present to the world is that when you are Kof, this means that people are immediately going to start talking to that person because she, just like Bloho, doesn't know how to protect her identity. It's why I have so much information on her. So people started to send messages to her and it didn't take very long for her to completely renounce Kof and for them to break up. I want to stop on the terminology that I'm using here because we are talking right now about two grown adults that are way into their 30s, 40s. So like these are not teenagers that have been online dating. That's already pathetic enough. But then you have to look at the premise of the online dating. These are people that have never met each other in real life, ever. Like, not even fucking once. They just talk on the phone. And they were planning to actually get together based on that. Meaning that Kof was actually planning on flying that woman over to America. Not just for a vacation, but to stay there. To live there. Which, one, I think is illegal. You're not allowed to introduce exotic species like this from Australia to the US because then they, they come and they invade the environment, and looking at the way she looks, she looks a little bit like Gollum, I think she feasts on wild rabbits and stuff, so it would really be an ecological disaster. So this is not allowed, first and foremost. And then on top of that, how pathetic must you be, as a fucking 40-year-old man, to start chatting with random fucking women on the internet? Like, is this middle school? Is it Blow telling us that he has a girlfriend in Canada and this is why we've never seen her? Because, like, this is the Australian girlfriend trope. The issue is that she exists and she immediately turned her back on him the second people started to pressure her. We're going to talk more about that because this is why I'm shitting on her so, uh, so efficaciously, if that's even a word. 
is because I don't think she's genuine. I don't think she actually believes that what she was doing was wrong or that Bloho is a bad person. She just got caught with her hand in the cookie jar and therefore she immediately backed down because she started to get trolled. But look at the absolute state of Kof's life. He was so fucking desperate to get a woman that he was willing to marry a complete fucking stranger. Like, this is male, male order bride. Male bride order, you know, it's when uh, an older man with money is going to get a girl from like Ukraine or something, some pretty chick that he's going to give a good life to and in exchange he's going to suck his dick. But in this case, this is not what we're talking about, right? We're not talking about like a prime smoke show imported directly from Eastern Europe. This is like, even in Australia, she's like a two. Like at the end of a long night of drinking, in the bar, there are two options remaining. It's one guy that is facing either taking Ruby Cherry home or that guy that has, that's at the bar is half drunk. He's a dude, but at the end of the day, it might be a better option than taking the troll home. And the guy is like, all right, fuck it. He just tosses a coin and whatever side it lays on, he's going to pick that. This is what we're talking about here. This is this level of option when you truly have nothing left. It's why I said that the last thing remaining for Bro, the last option as a woman would be some like immigrant, some Consuela from Texas or something that barely speaks English. She's had a husband that died, like killed by the cartel. She has no kids. Her chihuahua is like ran over by a truck. And her last thing in life is Bro. Like that's her last hope to have like a half decent life. This is the last thing he can score. That's what I used to say. And look what he got. He got some like half kangaroo, half woman girl from down under. That's, that's pretty much the same, it's the equivalent. And this is why, Bloho, I told you that you will never have a woman again. Because even that thing, that rodent that you managed to score, even her, you didn't actually secure her. Even her, it, it didn't work. It didn't, it didn't go through, nothing actually happened between the two of you. Why? Because we keep a watchful eye. People are always going to be sure to make sure that you never actually get to live that type of experience again. And even if no one intervened, you just fuck it up by yourself. I'll tell you some of the things he actually told that poor woman and you're going to laugh because it was a lie that whether or not we actually went in and blew it up was going to blow up at some point or the other. So don't feel too sorry about the situation, especially about that woman in particular, but it also about Bloho, because I know that some of you guys are fucking softies, and whenever something happens to him, you think, oh, even if he's a bad person, no one deserves it. He deserves it. Keep in mind that in this situation, even though Ruby Cherry is a fucking idiot, he was actively preying on her. He was running strategies and manipulation tactics to try and get her to come to America, and I'm going to tell you exactly what he said. But this is again a pattern with him. He preys on incompetent people, which, according to my own assessment of the situation, because he himself is an idiot, means that he most of the time is going to hunt and actually prey on disabled people. And this verifies itself every single time. Every time someone is connected to him and I do a deep dive, what do I find? I find that the person has a learning disability, they got bonked on the head, they're on a ton of drugs, or they have a mental illness, or they're way too young. And sometimes the five at the same time every single fucking time. And this one, he actually tried to get her directly in his nest because he was trying to fly her out. Again, great use of your money instead of fixing your fucking teeth to pay for the plane ticket of a woman you barely knew so that you can get her over. That is absolutely fucking ridiculous, but it's something that he attempted. However, everything fell apart because again, she turned her back on him. And as she did that, someone, not me, it wasn't my fault this time, someone collected the messages and the recordings they sent one another because she also gave that to us. And what the point were, I love. Because I've been telling you, Bloho, that we have access to everything you send. I don't know if you thought I was bluffing, but I clearly proved that I wasn't because I quoted exact messages you sent to people on your private mailboxes. At what point is it going to click in your head that I'm not lying? I actually know exactly what you're doing and I'm not the only person because these recordings have made the rounds on the internet. Everyone has seen them. We have absolutely everything, Blow. At this point, it's over for you. It's too late. You cannot escape us. Everything you do is going to be recorded and we're going to make fun of you for it. And this one is a fucking bounty because Holy fuck the mens of these recordings. I'm going to put them in the pinned comments. It's on a different channel together. Go check them out. But this is what they contained. 
So, in his attempt to get the more superior over to the US, he first and foremost told her that he made 150k a year. Which of course is fucking ridiculous. 140k, 150k would mean that he has at least 50 clients, even more than 50 clients. And if you talk to anyone on YouTube Fitness, you know that this is impossible. It's impossible to maintain this base of clients. And that is for people who have channels who actually get 100,000 views per video. So for him who barely gets 1,000 views, it's like, it's not even within the realm of what is real, of what is possible. He's such a shit liar, he doesn't understand that you have to give numbers that are sort of realistic. No, he immediately went, went for like top 1% earners in the US, which is ridiculous. And on top of that, you have 150K salary a year, but you have no property, you have no teeth, and you have no car. Where is the money going? In your home gym? I mean, plates are not that expensive. So first off, expensive lie, like quite literally. Who would believe that? And after that, because this is part of the trap, he told her that she could make the same. So he was like, oh yeah, come over. Like America is the land of possibility. Even someone like you who clearly has kangaroo descendants is able to make a living. This is the American dream. I don't know how you expected her to make that amount of money blow. Maybe by opening a petting zoo and letting people pet her and again telling her she's the missing link or like some weird species of ape. But even that isn't going to make that much money. Like what was your next big shot? Pimping her? To whom? Wolves? Coyotes? I mean, even homeless people would like turn that down. I'm going to say something fucked up. I think that if she was homeless, she would be, she would be safe. Like she could sleep in her underwear, like on the grass of a public park and she would wake up intact. No one would have touched her. Even I think wild animals would come by, sniff her and be like, all right, this is not even a corpse. Like we are far beyond rotten body here. I'm not even going to attempt to nibble on this. This is that level of, of, of just lack of grace and beauty we're talking about. So how exactly was she going to make that scratch? By coaching people? Who is going to hire a Hoompa Loompa, someone with an accent so thick that even puts mind to shame, to coach them? I mean, most people who get female coaches are females themselves. But a female is going to hire a coach to look better, to have a better ass, to have a flatter belly, etc. One look, you take one look at this ruby cherry thing and you realize that no one wants to look like this. Just like no one wants to look like you. And that way, you guys are actually a nice pair because you're anti-aesthetic, right? He is a blob and a potato. She is a fridge. They represent the exact opposite of what masculinity and femininity should look like. So she wasn't going to make that much money off of coaching. I can already tell you that. But the vicious part in this entire affair is that he tried to manipulate her using her emotions. He told her that that way, if she actually came through and made that money, she would be able to support her aging parents, which, I mean, I don't know how much it costs to feed kangaroos, like a few carrots maybe, so I don't know how much money she actually needs, but it shows how despicable this piece of shit is. That he would try to pull these strings and be like, oh yeah, Think about mom and dad. Think about them in their old age when they're going to have Alzheimer's and fucking shit themselves. Wouldn't you want to have money to take care of them? This is like, can you imagine being that prophetic as a man that the only way you can get a woman, even someone that ugly, is to use a type of tactics? I mean, listen to the audio, please. The recordings are, are chilling. Like, it's like, if you close your eyes, it's like there's like Nosferatu, like Dracula raising from the grave and being like, hey, Ruby. You, you want to make money? You want to take care of your parents? Come. Come to America. Come to Papa. Awful fucking thing. Cringe as fuck. But it also made me think of something that I think is pretty funny. Bloho, to be able to score a girl, has to run an entire MLM. A multi-level marketing scheme. His dating life is that fucking done that for him to get one chick... One ugly ass chick, he has to pull all of that. He has to create a fucking castle of lies. Bro, you know that like men, like normal dudes who look good and are fit, we can just talk to women. I can go out there and shut women up and they'll want to go home with me or to start something with me or date me because I don't look like a burnt victim. I don't look like someone who was for some reason buried for 15, 15 months and then was taken out of the grave and never took a shower in his life. You have to behave like this because you look the way you look. And uh, 
Admittedly, it worked because I think that she actually believed him. But the parent thing also rang a bell in my head because, as I told you, Bro has no connections with his parents. And it's something he actually told her. He told her that his dad doesn't talk to him, which in the past he used to lie about it. He used to say, oh, no, I'm in good terms with my dad and we love. I try to have Larry on the phone. He doesn't pick up anymore. But from what I know, he doesn't like you. And uh, if I were your dad, I also wouldn't like you because you're a disappointment and you prove it once again. You have a son, you have a boy, and your boy brings someone home. First and foremost, you would hope that the person is not feral and doesn't have rabies and is not going to be an animal. So an actual human at the dinner table would be nice. And you also would hope that they didn't capture that person, quite literally capture them, with that type of means. Like, can you imagine the discussion? Oh, how did you meet Ruby? Oh, I blackmailed her for months and months and started to actually talk to her about her parents dying. And that's how she fell for me. Very romantic blowhole. That would be very nice at your marriage for your sermon of like whatever thing you do before you, you get hitched with the person. This is truly beautiful. And th thank fuck you're not going to have children one day because I don't know what type of creatures or what type of, uh, of golems you would be able to produce with that woman. But he's, uh, he is actually sterile, so we don't have to talk about that at all. Now, for the rest of the recording, if you're not ready it's going to make you cringe to the point that I think it might be dangerous for your health. There is a specific segment, and he repeats that a ton, where he says to her that he sacrificed everything. He talks to, about that because apparently he sacrificed everything in the past for a woman. But the way he presents the entire thing, it sounds like the Dark Knight. Like it, he sounds like an edgy teenager who watched Joker one too many times and now believes that he is him. Like, he is that character. And it's a new pattern of Blow where he's always done that, but now he is so deep down the delusion that he constantly quotes authors or movie. He, he is not able to actually talk by himself. He has become so schizophrenic, he has so many personalities, that now he can't find the original one anymore. So he just goes from movie role to movie role. So when he tells people that he gave up on everything, apparently to actually grow his co-thing business, it's, it's that you can tell that it's not really him speaking. You just heard that from somewhere. It sounded cool, so he just repeats it. Of course, it's bullshit. He never actually sacrificed everything. He just sabotaged all of the endeavors that he actually tried to go through with. And that also goes with the people in his life, and that also goes with that person. But interestingly enough, we learned in the recordings and the chat logs that he used to see a woman. Before Ruby Cherry, he was actually in a relationship with a stripper. A stripper that got arrested for meth possession. I think you can judge a man, not necessarily by the way he behaves, but also by the type of women that he manages to score. So far with Blow, we have Moon Cookie. I'm not going to expand more on that. There's going to be a special episode for her. Some Catholic chick who was high on coke. A fucking meth addict that sells her body to, for a living. And then an actual rodent. Nice, that's... that's those are high-quality women. At this point, I think that if you had went with Mark Stubing and you had become his spouse, you would be better off. Because Stubes is actually pretty good-looking. So maybe just be done with the ladies because your palmares is fucking ridiculous. And the things he did for that stripper also blew my mind because you know all of these pictures he used to post about airports where he was in a, an airport bathroom and he would talk about, oh yeah, a guy approached me to touch my bicep and asked me how much I bench, which, by the way, is totally not gay, for, for a story to make up as a man. Why not a woman? But okay. All of these scripts apparently were to see that person. So this is an alpha man, a Chad, who is such a fucking cock and a simp that he would fly himself to see a, a worthless fucking stripper eight times out of the year. And apparently he also supported her. That, of course, is what he says. We don't know if that's true. But what I don't get is, why would you say that? Like, why would you say that? It makes you look fucking horrendous. It makes you look like a little bitch. That you are so desperate to get a woman that you're willing to settle for a sex worker who is also a drug dealer. Like, what happened to your values? I thought that you were a born-again Christian. I don't remember Jesus telling men to choose their wife amongst the whores or amongst those who sniff cocaine. I think that's actually quite the opposite of what you're supposed to do. You know, you have all of that craze about getting a trad woman 
who is like into conservative values and wants children. Bro doesn't understand that, I think. He, he, he read that, but the wrong way around. He goes for the most degenerate people he can find. And I think it's because it's the only people he can find, because what other women would want to get with him? Again, Ruby Cherry is an absolute dog. So, in a sense, it would make sense that she would follow that type of nonsense. And it would also make sense that she would be the next in line after the meth addict. So that's what happened. He uh, also, and this is something that, that made me tick, tried to get Ruby over in his wood without other options. So his big plan was to get her over and then to make sure that she had no choice but to stay with him, which is quite smart, by the way. I mean, it truly means that he knows what he has to offer. But what I want to question is, what exactly does he have to offer? Because if you're going to get a woman over with her child, which, Jesus fucking Christ, thank God it didn't happen because we all know what Broho does with small animals and with children, what was she supposed to do? Because the cool thing, thing wasn't going to work because he's a liar, so she would have found out eventually. Was the plan to just store her in the closet or maybe to put her in the overflow fridge or whatever the fuck he calls it? She was going to eventually realize that something was up. First and foremost, when he opened the door to the cock shack, the place, is, the place he calls an apartment. I mean, she would immediately have noticed that there's a problem. One, the floor is dark. Two, there are no furniture, it's only gym equipment. Bro, I know you know nothing about women, but something they like is comfort. Even someone as feral as your would-be girlfriend is going to require more than just a doggy bag on the floor to piss and poo and something like that resembles a towel for her to lay down at night. She needs, you know, a couch, maybe a bathtub to take bath. Like these are necessities when you're going to welcome a woman into your life. He didn't think about that. And so I really question whether or not his big plan was to just make sure that she would be there. And then since she wouldn't have any resources to leave, just keep her there and make sure that she wouldn't leave out of desperation. Because as we all know, he's really good at that. He got Moon Cookie like that as well by threatening to kill himself all the time, crying all the time. But can you imagine the lovely life of Jason Bloho and Ruby Cherry? Can you imagine the great activities they would do on a daily basis? Like for example, a hot date to Costco on the bus because he doesn't have a fucking car. What a great way to spend an afternoon. This is lovely. Can you look at the ham at Costco? You can only look at them because you don't have any money to actually purchase them. So that's one thing. That's a very romantic ride. And then what else? Right? Because as I said, there needs to be some money being made at some point. You're going to have to support a family. So I think that the idea of the petting zoo is not too stupid. You know, um, back in the days, and it's so true in certain countries, you would go around the town and there would be some people with bear and monkeys or even cats sometimes, and they would make them dance. I think they would run that type of business with Bloho. Because again, that creature that she, he called a would-be girlfriend, I think is on so much steroids that if she stopped shaving, she would look like an ape in two weeks time. And then you can just make her dance in the middle of, uh, of Houston. I don't know if it's actually allowed, but I'm sure that you can find some shady places in the ghetto that you live in or that would be doable. And then you can collect money from that. It's one option. You know this weird homeless couple you see in every single city where the girl is pushing a cart full of rubbish and the guy is walking around with like holes in his socks? This is how I picture them. Because, and this is going to be the big, the big next reveal, Blow is not going to have a place very soon. So where exactly was he supposed to stash that thing? Like... Kangaroos need roofs, right? When they live in the wild, yeah, sure, they're fair when they can get by. But at some point, if, one, if you take one home and you domesticate it, you're going to have to find a place where it can actually lay its head, get some water, get some rest, etc., etc. And that just simply cannot happen outside. But if you believe him, if you listen to, listen to him, that could never happen, of course, because the way he describes his business is like if you listen to Elon Musk talk about Tesla. Apparently, he, he has a booming business with tons of clients, even though apparently he lost half of his business from lockdown, which, how does that make any sense? Lockdown is when there was a boom in gym equipment being purchased and people getting coaches because everyone was staying home. So how exactly does that make sense? It makes no fucking sense. And the, the thing with lockdown as well to keep in mind is that it not only did nothing to his business, it helped him, but it also kept him alive. I think he would already be out on the streets by now without the lockdown, without COVID, because he got those juicy checks from the government. And by the way, 
It's something that is verifiable. He kept saying that he was not on the right tax bracket and he would never receive that. That's bogus. He got this payment. It's information that is out there and you can find it. He got thousands of dollars for the, from the taxpayer, which also shows that he has no money on his own. He's making no money himself. <clears throat> he also has apparently 65 videos that he brags about, like it's a good thing, we need to be released. Bro, it's very easy to have 65 videos that are just waiting to be uploaded when they're all the same, with the same fucking thumbnail, with the same things you said. At this point, if we were to shrink down and YouTube actually applied its policy, you would have maybe 300 videos on the channel tops because all of the doubles, all of the clones would be deleted. That is not, that is not something to be proud of. Also, you are not motivated by love. Again, I don't know where he read that. He found it sounded cute. You are motivated by love. And yet every single time someone gets in contact with you, they turn into shit and, the, and their life goes up in flame. Look at that Robbie Cherry chick. Two weeks, two weeks of being involved with your fat ass and she got trolled to hell and back, cried in videos. Like at this point, you're like a plague, but worse than the plague because the plague we can eradicate and you for some reason were supposed to consider you a human being and therefore it's not acceptable to get rid of you in a fire. But uh, as far as the clients that he claims, again, I have never been able to verify more than three or four at a time. And it's always funny to hear him talk about how efficient he is since those very same clients sent me what he sends them. And for the most part, it's shitty Excel sheets. And you can tell he doesn't know how to use Excel either because he does that thing that children do where instead of just using the software the way it's intended to, en to enlarge the bubbles or to be able to enter more text. No, no. What he does is he just writes more text. And so you have one bubble that's blown out of proportion and it throws off the entire formatting of the page. He is that stupid. And these Excel sheets are the proof that no one with a brain would actually get him as a cough. It's the reason why you don't hear a single powerlifter who actually competes who says that blow who is this cough. Whereas it's usually something that you use to try to promote your coaching business because it tends to be a sign that you know what you're talking about. So both him and that Ruby Cherry chick are essentially running a scam because I think that she is as stupid as he, as he is. There's no, the, no one in this entire scenario is going to save the other. He also told people that he read a hundred novels like in a year. I don't think you can read. I've seen the way you type blue, the one language you speak is English and you can't even type in that one language. So I doubt you can read books. He also apparently has seen a friend in four years, which I believe because that's probably the only time where he was actually truthful, but that's also a lie. Blue, you have a lot of friends. Every time you start a stream, all of your friends are waiting to jump on stream to talk to you about nice things and not to troll you and to try to make you cry at all because we are all that you have left. You can keep attempting to bribe women from third world countries, not to say that Australia is a third world country, to try to get them over, but that's never going to work at some point. They're always going to be intercepted or border patrol is going to realize that you're actually trying to sneak exotic species into the country. So they're never going to make it through. At this point, the only people you have is us. You used to have a dog, but you killed it and you blame other people for it. So you have to make do with what you have and what you have is us. And that's, that's right, right? We're going to take good care of you. That's why I think truly that the hell that Broho put himself into is in reality an endless punishment for the things he's done in the past, a type of punishment that is also there to give us means because it's always entertaining. Whatever happens to him, it's never boring. He is truly the greatest lolka of all times. He also gave up on video games, which is good, but it would be better if you actually use your time to get a job right? The time that you wasted on video games, all of that to take care of a woman again, the woman that I spoke about, the stripper. A stripper that, when she was eventually replaced by this Australian chick, was in a long line of women that betrayed him because apparently she couldn't take care of the relationship. I mean, maybe, just maybe, there were some warning signs. Maybe the fact that she's a stripper or that she's on meth. Maybe with Ruby Cherries, was, it was the same, like, Usually when you have women like this who are in their late 30s and no man wants them, it's because there's a reason, right? It's because they're poisonous. Something happened. Something you would know again if you actually spoke to women or had any actual experience with them. 
But when you date people who do cocaine or meth, you can't expect much from him. And that is the ultimate betrayal. And that is what almost, almost concludes the entire Ruby Cherry arc. Now, before we move on, I just want to make a quick comparison to make you understand what we're dealing with here. For those of you that remember Rich, he suffered a, a similar type of scam because in the Ruby Sherry scenario, even though she's an idiot, she also tried to manipulate Bloho. Right? She plays the victim, but I think that she saw the subscribers, she bought into the idea she was going to be able to make a ton of money, and therefore she also tried to get herself in and to get that sweet, sweet green card. And Rich went through the same thing. If you remember, there was an Icelandic chick, like some blonde chick, that tried to play Rich for a green card. The difference is that she was actually attractive. I mean, it's not my type, but if she slept in my bed, I wouldn't go sleep in the bathtub, right? She, she was a pretty hot blonde chick. Compare that to what Bloho has, right? The two is the exact same fucking scenario. It's a woman trying to get a green card. On one hand, you have a bimbo with big boobs, a fat ass, blonde hair, who most likely is pretty good at sucking dick. And on the other one, who has a woman who maybe sucks dick, but I don't think she leaves it intact. Right, I think she takes a nibble or two out of it because she confuses it with a carrot. This is the caliber of woman that was going to be able to outsmart and outscam Bloho. Sad. Like, there's only one word and that's fucking sad. Now, let's see what happened afterwards because it doesn't stop there. You know, the, the scammy be, being the, the person being scammed is a story as old as time. But what made me uh, crack up is the type of scenario that Bloho tried to run because in the recordings, you can hear that he tried to present himself as like an old millionaire, an old basher who never had kids and now has a fortune and he just wants someone to share it with. He said some pathetic stuff like, oh, I make bank, but I'm not feeling fulfilled. Yeah, right. This is interesting because it leads to the next point. He speaks about making so much money. He tried to lure a woman in by saying he had money. And yet very recently when he was confronted by trolls on the live streams, he proved to them apparently that he has cash. But the only thing he could actually provide is a bank account statement for 10K. Like pressed and in his reserves, the only thing he can provide is that it's 10,000 fucking measly dollars, which is reminiscent of the Lane Norton days. Remember when he was told by Len Norton to provide proof that he had money on the bank account to be able to actually engage in the debate? And the most he was able to actually gather was 8,000 bucks. And that was like, I think, four months of payment, even more, plus savings, plus Moon Cookie's money. In five years' time, he managed to get from 8,000 bucks to 10,000 bucks. A grain total of two grain accumulated in five years of work. This is truly the sign of someone who is an entrepreneur and who is really good at making money. Bro, I want you to understand how pathetic that is. 10K is what I managed to put aside my first year when I first got a job. An entry-level job that I was not paid very well at, of course. I was paying rent, unlike you who's a parasite, paying for food, paying for everything, and I still managed to save that much in a year. You've had God knows how many years on this earth and that's all you have to show for. This is absolutely fucking pathetic. And if he had his money in assets, it would be understandable. But again, a quick search shows that Jason Braha owns no property in the US or in any other country. So what is he going to say that he has property in like a, a hidden country somewhere in South America? Maybe during the part of war, who knows? Maybe he even started an entire family with some chick there. That is, of course, the type of lie that he would tell you. He also has no car. But the reason why I think it's interesting to mention that lack of funds is because, as we all know, he lives in a rented condo in the middle of the ghetto. And just to prove to you how fucked your life is and how it truly is over, I had a guy who lives in Houston who drove by and who actually did a recon of the area where you live. And he certified me 100% that this is one of the worst areas to live. It's right next by the highway, so it's always noisy. It's in one of the shittiest neighborhoods. It's one where the, pro the price of the properties is the lowest. It truly is the pits of the pits. Like, it's one of the worst places to live in the entire USA. Which is funny coming from a guy, a white supremacist, who used to say all that shit about black people being ghetto. No one is ghetto than you. No one is lower class than you. It's impossible. It's physically impossible. You tried to import 
some like, I think there's a name for them in Australia, some bogans. You try to import some bogan women who like, no one wants even on that island that is made up of people who were imported there because they were criminals. And even her, she doesn't want your fucking dusty ass. That, that is, this is truly, absolutely incredible. But to go back to the condo thing, the, oh Jesus Christ, I forgot to say something too. Just a small tangent here, because I know that Bloho has been bragging about having a YouTube rep in the past and being connected, having a therapist now apparently speaks with YouTube rep on the daily, which is impossible. It's not how it fucking works. The big thing with him too is that, oh, I don't want to forget this. Yeah, I right, to say that. Nowadays, the number one meant minor is not even me. Like most of the information I'm sharing with you right now comes from other people. And it's interesting because for those of you who have been following, the MISC is shut down. The MISC is the place that targeted blow directly and all of the information was on there. That place doesn't exist anymore. So that should be a big victory for blow. Actually, it should be massive. And yet it changed nothing. The people just jumped onto another ship. Now they're on Discord. You know what this means? It means that whatever happens to me, even if I had a heart attack right now and I died, your life would still be shit. Because even if I'm not the one to reveal the man to the public, other people will. So it's fucking over for you. There is always going to be someone waiting in the shadows to fuck you over and to fuck you up. This is beautiful, right? It is, it is as, as our Lord Spaniard would say, poetry or pottery because he struggles to pronounce words. Truly get what deserve in this scenario, get what deserve 100%. Now to go back to the thing before I went on this big tangent, as you know, the condo he lives in in the ghetto is not his, he rents it. And it has very, very recently been put up for sale. Which means that if everything goes according to plan, Bloho or Boyemingway is going to get evicted. And that is very interesting indeed. And you're going to see why. Now, the thing with this apartment in particular is that if you go back in time, you will see that for as long as Bloho has been the person renting that place, it's been up for rent every year. And that's already strange because, as you know, a landlord will not go, is not going to put up a property for rent again if he already has a tenant, which shows that he most likely is not very happy with the tenant that he has, aka Blow. So that's already a detail to keep in mind. I think that the reason why he managed to save his place is first and foremost because he is on Section 8. I think this is the proof. You cannot evict someone who is on Section 8. They have the place on lock. It's extremely complicated because they are considered to be disprivileged, whatever the fuck you want to name it. And I also think that there is a weird defense mechanism put in place by Blow too, is that he turned the place into such a roach lair that whoever would visit the place afterwards would just refuse to take it because it would, it would take so much money to make the place livable after him. Again, the floor, the floor is completely dark at this point. He never actually washes or cleans. He put equipment everywhere. And on top of that, you know when you get bed bugs and you have to get a team to get in and they completely smoke the apartment? I think that if you want to live in Bloho's place after him, you have to do the same thing. Because if you don't, you're going to catch disease, right? You're going to catch whatever he has and no one wants that. So the place was mostly safe. He kept renting the place and he kept being a fucking parasite in it. But it's recently been sold. So the tenant... The person who owns the place, or rather, yeah, the, the, the owner is going to switch. And for the most part, this means that Bloho is going to have to move. In most scenarios, he is going to have to move. He denies it, which proves to us that something is going on because he has been on Facebook telling people that he wasn't going to go anywhere. And I think it's because he's scared. Because if he were to have to move right now, he would be royally fucked since he has all of his equipment to move. And the issue is that he has no friends. It's something that he said himself. He has no friends. And on top of that, he has no money. He has 10K, but it's 10K he scratched together. It's all he has. If he spends it on moving, he has nothing to eat. So he will be absolutely incapable of moving all of that equipment by himself. It's not something that is going to be realistic. So you can expect him to start selling. He's going to say the same bullshit he did when he sold his, his, uh, his guns. He's going to say, oh, it's... It's just because I don't need it, guys. I don't give up. I don't, I don't buy that for a second. It's because he doesn't have the ability to actually move them himself. And therefore, he is being literally forced to sell off that equipment. Now, what I find weird with this is that if he truly had all of that money, why wouldn't he just buy the condo? 
because I checked the price before it was actually sold and it wasn't that expensive. It was like 130K, which is fucking ridiculous. Where I live, and it's not a very expensive area, a condo is at least two times that price, at least. That's like the shittiest condos you can get. Most of them are around like 300, 400K. For the condo to be that cheap truly proves that it is nothing. Like it's a garbage area to live in. And yet he couldn't even get that, which is again, interesting because apparently he makes 150K a year. Meaning that you make in a year more than the place costs. So you should be able to buy it cash. Again, I'm not special. I'm not like a big baller. I'm only in my 30s, early 30s, but I could buy that place. I almost could buy it cash. I'm at a point where I have enough money saved that I could almost buy it cash. And you can't? What the fuck have you been doing all these years so that you can't even afford a shitty ass condo in the ghetto? What? What? Even on minimum wage, if you worked minimum wage for 20 years with a good credit, you would be able to afford that place. It would take a long time to pay off, but you would be able to. But for him, can you imagine Bloho showing up to the bank asking for a loan? What exactly is he going to say? Right? He has a 20 years gap in his resume. Right? Because coaching teenagers that are anorexic and that you groom doesn't count as job experience blow. So you have to explain 20 fucking years of doing nothing and sitting on your ass with no revenue and collecting welfare paychecks and welfare money. No bank in the existence of mankind is going to lend money to someone like that ever. I'm very curious to see his credit score because I think that he might have the lowest. He doesn't have zero. He has like minus 25 or something like this. Can you imagine Blow walking into the bank and trying to smooth talk his way to a loan, explaining how he's a veteran and he deserves it, and how for the services he did for his country, he, he, he actually, he's in connection with the Clintons, and because as we all know, like, they are connected to the Illuminati and the bank, so if he's not, give, if he, if he's not given the loan, he will use his like, connections to get directly into the vault. Imagine the levels of LARP we could get out of the fat fuck if we can manage to actually make him feel bad about the fact that he wasn't able to buy that condo because it truly is pathetic for a man his age to not be able to buy a condo. He's fucking 50. At 50, you're supposed to sell the condo that you were with your wife in and you raised your kid in and you're supposed to move in a big house somewhere in the country, not the other way around. You're not supposed to be evicted from the condo to go back to live wherever the fuck he's going to go live next Actually, we have the address. It's been doxxed already because it's too stupid. But it's interesting to see that even the one place that could be a fallback for him, that's already been doxxed. So what is the next option? Is he going to go back to live with his sister? I mean, that's a possibility. But from what I've heard, she doesn't like him anymore. So what is it going to happen next? Also, she has kids now. You don't want blow around your kids. You can ask uh, that poor chick from, from Texas if it was a good idea to be around his grubby hands, it isn't. So it's now a situation that could be described as a dead hand because he has no possession. He literally sleeps on a futon. Again, the absolute state of this man, 50 years old, sleeps on a futon. It's acceptable when you're a teenager or a bachelor on the grind, but you're 50. It's time to buy an actual fucking bed with a bed frame. Although maybe it's because a futon is better, you can just toss it out. Like when he pisses himself at night, it's less expensive to replace. I don't know. I don't want to know. But it is ironical and a little bit sweet justice to know that after what he's done to Nova, he essentially lives like an absolute dog and an absolute gym cell too. He used to talk about gym cells all the time and insults saying, oh, they're so pathetic. Bro, you are the absolute gym cell, right? You know all of these memes where there's a specific face associated with the meme like Chad? So let's start using Bloho's face for the gym cell because that's all his life is. We're talking about a 50-year-old man who has no family, no friends, who, who does steroids to be able to lift three plates on the bench and who has pretty much converted his entire living space into a gym. That's all he has going for him. His entire living room is an actual gym. It's all he has and it's all he does. And he tries to compensate really hard because in the past month, he started to post Chad memes on Facebook, which first and foremost, unless it's being ironical and even then it's a little bit sketchy, 50 year old and you post that type of memes, isn't it time to grow up for you? Isn't it time to move on from these silly stereotypes? You'll see that he hasn't moved on because I have an actual quotation and an actual capture and skin cap 
of what he thinks about being a man is. And I'm going to actually share it with you because it's fucking hilarious. But luckily for him, he might actually be able to get away with it again. Because as I told you, there's going to be a new owner and the new owner might actually keep him. And I also checked the laws in place. And from what I understand, if you're on section eight and you're a bona fide parasite to society, you are given 90 days to be able to move on before you get evicted. And even then you can just claim squatters right and stay there forever. And since we know how righteous blow is, there is a very strong chance that it's going to be what he does. But again, it's, it's ironical because we're talking about blow. The right-wing guy who wants to kill Mexicans and sell their bodies over through the border, who hates black people, he hates them on the basis of class, saying that they're parasites, but I've, I know Mexicans, I know black people, like, they are a billion times harder workers than you are, and it's not hard. How dare you talk about Latinos in the first fucking place? They do all of the hard labor. I would love to see your ass on the roof in the middle of July, replacing the roof. Bro would last like two minute stops. Because he simply cannot take hardship. He is soft as baby's shit. It is insulting for him to try to pretend to be anything but what he truly is, which is a welfare leash. He's been connecting taxpayer money for a long ass time and therefore he has no place to actually, to actually stand, no leg to stand, to talk shit about any other race or any other group of people. He is the worst of the worst. Even calling him white trash is an insult to white trash. And this is a little uh, caveat or uh, more like a little, a little detail that I think is going to be very interesting to the people who make videos about Blow. I know that in the past, he used to take videos down with copyright strikes. And it scared a lot of people into not being active anymore and not exposing him anymore. But I have big news for you. Now that I've been invested in the entire copyright battle on YouTube, I've learned a ton about the system. And what I realized is this. What he did in the past was bluff. He actually didn't have the ability to take the videos down. It only took the person to challenge the claim to actually get the video back up. Because if you push the process to its limits, at the end of the day, the only way to keep a video down is to sue the person directly through the legal system. YouTube is not going to intervene. So this means that because Blow has no fucking money and he's terrified of courts, he's never going to shop in front of a judge for reasons I said in the past, his previous misdeeds, you can do whatever the fuck you want with his content. You can take whatever on his channel, and if he strikes you, strike back. Send counterclaims. He will never challenge them, because if he does, you're going to be able to force him to sue you, and he's never going to do that. So feel free. Fuck on him. Fuck on him. Don't fuck on him. You're going to catch something. But shit on him as much as you want. Now, to actually segue into the end of the video, I'm going to talk to you about the messages that I actually got directly from Bloho, the things that he sent to that ruby cherry chick to try to impress her. Now, you would think you're trying to impress a kangaroo. What could you tell them? That maybe you can jump very high, that you are responsible for getting rid of like the Tasmanian devil. I don't know exactly. This is not the route that he chose. Instead, he decided to send to him messages about what he believed to be a real man. So in his own words, all real men live by a code. And the question is, what is your code, bro? Because from what I see, your code is being a parasitic piece of shit, being untrustworthy, being fat, backstabbing people, and whining whenever you're called out. Is that what a man is? Is that what the man code is in your own mouth? Because he likes to talk about honor and shit like this, and you would think that the guy is a samurai, but from what I know, the samurais weren't bald-headed pieces of shit. They actually were people who fought for their lives and who fought for their honor. Something that you know absolutely fucking nothing about. So it's hilarious that he would actually go out there and say things like this. But it doesn't stop there. Bloho also talked to her about, and I quote, talking about giving sex advice to boys. That sentence by itself should land him in jail. The guy is a fucking creep. He wrote about sending tips for skinny, aesthetics-obsessed boys. One, strange as fuck. Bro, what the hell? Stop looking at teenagers in their underwear flexing. I will send the fucking feds on your ass. And I know you know them all and you're friends with them. Fucking bogus. Secondly, that's exactly what you are. Bro is a guy who was obsessed with aesthetics but who felt miserably because he has no work ethic. So it's paradoxical to see him then say that 
Bodybuilding forums are infested with people with mental illnesses. That's you. They're talking about you. You spent decades of your life on these forums, wasting your life away, sending thousands of messages, some of which included asking dick pics from teenagers. Because yes, that's also something that I unveiled. I think that I said that in episode 19. It's something that this fucking creep did. So what exactly and what types of tips are you going to give these guys? Well, we are lucky because I actually have the tips. So be prepared. This is a direct quotation from what he thinks young men need to hear. On average, it takes longer for women to orgasm. Okay, not orgasm. Orgasm is for betters. A real man makes women orgasm. I don't know what it is. It's just maybe that he's too much of a klutz to write properly, but orgasm, okay? Then, foreplay and stamina are your friends! Exclamation point. Changing positions is fun, but you need to maintain the position to be able to finish. Learn to get better at oral. You know, people, especially in the US, try to get teenagers not to have sex, and you have all of these talks about abstinence and put Jesus first. All of that shit doesn't work because teenagers are horny. What I think the solution would be instead is you get Broho in the middle of the classroom and you let him just talk. Just let him give sex advice to the boys. And just like that, you're going to have a generation that is going to wait until marriage to have, to have sex. Even beyond marriage. You'll create people who are so deeply emotionally scarred from what they've heard that they're just going to refuse to even touch their genitals. Like, this is the solution. We can actually completely kill the, the AIDS epidemic if and only if we can get Bro to talk to the communities that actually engage in promiscuity. He might actually be the solution. Forget about condoms. Condoms do nothing. Instead, try our boy Hemingway. He is indeed the solution. If this guy came to my class, this bald-headed fuck, and started to talk to me, looking at me in the eyes about fucking changing positions and learn to get better at oral, like, I think my boys would just, like, leave. They would grab their luggage and be like, all right, like, f starting from this day, you're a eunuch. It's over. Like, you're not going to have sex. This guy just destroyed any chance of you ever having sex. Foreplay and stamina are your friends. The worst part is that he thinks he's cool. When he says th shit like this, he thinks he's cool. Keep in mind again that he's talking to the kangaroo here. He's talking to Ruby Cherry. Doesn't it give you flashbacks? I remember being like this, but it was when I was 11. You know when you used to e-date girls and you used to send naughty messages with like smiley, winky face and you thought it was going to translate in real life and it never did, of course, because it's just fucking embarrassing? He's still at this point. This guy goes into chat rooms and tries to convince women to go to bed with him. He used to do that on Facebook. Remember episode 16, 17, when he talks about sending sexy deck pics to women and talking about his, his juicy uh, juicy arm string legs. I'm getting like, I'm getting nauseous just talking about it. This is his strategy, right? This is the way this guy actually thinks you're supposed to get on with women. This is what he believes women want to actually hear. It's not, unless you talk to like fucking Ruby Cherry, who like, I think could be bribed into having sex if you just like bought a pack of smokes for her or something, an actual real woman is going to run away from you. And that is actually good. Anyone will run away from you. Because this is despicable, but it's not really surprising. That is who he is. That is the man known as our boy Hemingway. The man that gave advice to young boy about how to be masculine when he himself knows absolutely jack shit about it. Now, it is time for us to conclude this video. I know that it was plentiful and the men's are pretty overwhelming, so try to take it in, don't overdose. But know and know for sure that it might not be over, because Oboy Hemingway is the cow that keeps on giving, and it's going to continue, because coming up next October is Woods. Woods, the next big cope by Oboy Hemingway. Woods, the politing competition that no one gives a fuck about, that if I hadn't heard about it, I wouldn't even know it exists. I mean, Woods for actual competitors is good, and I like to follow it, it's fun, but for seniors? Who watches the seniors beyond a few weirdos? No one. You are essentially compete in the Paralympics of powerlifting, but you don't have the excuse of having a handicap. Because at least the handicapped people who compete, they're brave. They're doing something to like push their limits. Your limits is just that you're an old fart. Who cares about it? I'm not going to go to my retirement home to watch 90-year-old geezers sprint. 
oh, old Gerald managed to win in like 55 seconds, great, because all of the other competitors are at heart attacks. Why do I care? And the answer is, I don't fucking care. And also, no one cares about wood. So if you think you're going to redeem yourself by breaking a wood record, a senior wood record, which means absolutely jack shit, you're wrong. Because there are teenagers, bro, that are stronger than you. You bench three plates. There are dudes on YouTube Fitness who bodybuild, who are half your weight, who do more. It's fucking idiotic. And the worst part is that he did drugs for that. Because he puts natural in his fucking, fucking things when he live streams that piece of shit, of course, because he has no honor. But he's not natural. He's been blasting drugs for 10 years. All of that for this, to be able to appear at Woods, to be able to show up with other people that he's not going to be because he's not even going to manage to fucking win and no one cares. Might as well just fart in your own hands and inhale it because that's the same fucking difference. At the end of the day, powerlifting is on the decline in terms of popularity. It's not really meta anymore. And for senior lifters in particular, it's especially true. We are not there to witness some old fart who has like five hip replacements do a high squat with 500 pounds. It's simply not interesting. No one is actually going to follow it. Even if you did manage to get something done, it would just not even make a single noise. Your channel would still go on to die because 100K subs, 1,000 views, 1% reputation rate, it's over, right? It's over with women. It's over your channel. It's over your coaching business. It's over your powerlifting. At this point, nothing is going to pull you out of that hole. If you manage to not get evicted, it would actually be worse because at least it means that if you got evicted, you could go out there on the streets and die and manage to salvage something out of your existence, get eaten by a pack of dogs or whatever roams the streets of Houston. But instead, you're just going to slowly degrade by yourself, lonely in your shitty ass condo, like a roach, the roach that you are, and we're going to keep making fun of you because at the end of the day, it's the last thing that you have left. It's us just throwing tomatoes at you. That's the last remaining ability that you have to throw human wolf is for us to actually shit on you. And you can rest assured that we are going to continue because I don't know if you've noticed, but Woods is a public event and people can travel to public event. So maybe some of your friends are going to show up to actually support you in your great endeavor to break wood records that no one gives a fuck about. So be on the lookout for that. And for you guys, the Ment Addicts, I'm going to see you for episode 22 coming out, maybe next fall. Hello, Ruby. Uh, I guess something I also wanted to say with all of that. be with me. I mean, Ruby, I make like 150000 You could be making that type of money. Mine's going to go up. You're not willing to sacrifice everything. I sacrificed everything else in my life. I cut everything else out. It was just my business and her. And I am. I'm a different man after all of that. That is my secret. That's the entirety of my magic secret. I didn't have a choice. I had to do it.